Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing you yet another special screencast. This time we're talking about Excel and we're talking about how to calculate price breakpoints. What's a price breakpoint? A price breakpoint is a way of offering discounts to customers to reward them for ordering larger volumes of products when we're selling products. So the only way under the FCC regulations that I can justify giving different prices to different customers is by justifying at that based on a, a quantity discount based on saying they've ordered more therefore I'm giving them a lower unit price and from a strictly sales and marketing standpoint of course it's a great way to induce people to purchase more by saying you get better value for your dollar if you increase your order so we have price breakpoints and over here you'll see I've got a sample listed of what might be somebody's price breakpoints but the way this template is set up is you can get this template and put whatever price breakpoint ranges you want to put here and this first column here under quantity range is just a description it's nothing more than that so what you have to do then once you've defined it in terms of the descriptions is then go in and pull out the lower end of each range and put that in the breakpoint column because that lets Excel know as you're gonna see when we write the formula in a second this is where you look to find the price breaks and when you find something that falls within the right price break range I want you to give me the unit price so that I can figure out how much I'm actually going to charge this customer and this way I can enter in any quantity and have it return the results so whether I have zero or whether I have 1500 units whatever I put in here it's going to calculate the total after we write this formula and the formula is very simple it's a V lookup which stands for vertical lookup and I write equals VLOOKUP and I open up a parenthesis and the first thing I have to tell Excel is what am I looking up? Well I'm looking up the quantity. I'm looking up the piece of information that somebody else is going to enter and once I've identified what I'm looking up I need to tell Excel essentially uh, two things. I have to give Excel a whole range. The first column of that range is where it's going to look for a match to this and then the second or any other columns I include are columns that may potentially include what information I want Excel to return for me if and when it does find a match. So you'll notice I've highlighted the whole entire range that's relevant here. I have to start at the, the, the matching point. So I have to start at the breakpoint column because that first column is automatically where Excel is going to look for a match. So I've included the two columns that apply. And then what I want to do, and you'll notice Excel put this name in here, quantity range. That's because I've got a predefined range name for the area that I've selected, and Excel recognized that and put that in for me. Once I've got my range selected, I simply need to tell Excel where is it going to go to return a result if it does find a match. And I put the number 2 in there because it's the second column. That's where it's going to return a result. So if it's looking up 1500, it's going to find 1500 right here. It's got to return me a $7.95 result. Anything more than 2000, it's going to return me a 695 unit price result. So that's how this works. One more piece of information I have to put in the formula. I enter another comma, letting Excel know I'm ready to put in the next piece of information. And you'll see in the autofills, Excel shows me what the two choices are. I can either put true or false. And you can see, it tells you right here, if I put the word false, it will only return a result if it finds an exact match. Well, because we're dealing with ranges here, we actually want the other. We want, we want it to say true because we want it to find an approximate match. So I'm going to write true, and that's the whole key to making this work, because by having it find an approximate match, it will return a result based on a range. If I put false, it would only return a proper result if I had one of these exact numbers in my item to look up. So when I hit enter, sure enough, it gets me my $7.95. And let's test the formula to make sure it works. If I hit a zero, it actually comes up with zero. As soon as I hit a one, I get my $11.95. I hit a 99. I get my 1195 still. As soon as I hit 100, I get my 1095. So we've seen it works. You still want to test these things at every extreme of the range to make sure it's working. 1499 units still gets me 895. As soon as I go to 1500, I've got my 795. 1999, 1999, I'm still getting 795. 2000, I'm getting 695 now. And let's put 5000 just to be sure and sure enough nothing funky happens so now we know our formula works so let me bring this up for you to review very quickly the formula is really very simple it's a vertical lookup so I type equals V lookup I put in the cell that I'm looking up the cell that has the information I'm looking up rather I put in the range in our case it recognized that my range had a name to it so it replaced the actual cell designated range with the name 
and then I tell it which column in that range to, to pull the result from when it finds a match. And then finally, I tell it to return an approximate match in this case by using the word true here so that Excel will find just that, an approximate match, meaning as long as it finds a number up to but not including the next range, it will return the result that I want. Now, very quickly, just to give you what else I've got in this template for you, is I've got an item list here where you can go down and list a, a series of products and once again you can add lines so you can have as many products as you need and then I have a sample estimate form here which you can actually use so you come over here and I've got a drop down here for you which will automatically pull from that item list that you've set up and then you can put in your quantities here and these unit prices are looked up from the same price breaks so basically you go to the basic form you set up your price break points remember these are just descriptions but I would do this first because that's going to help you figure out what to enter in this part then you enter your price break points here and you can do that manually and once you've got that and then of course you enter in what the price is at each point once you've got that in place I can come over here and I've, notice I've got a quantity of 500 in here it's looking it's looking up and getting nine dollars and ninety five cents if I go to my form 500 gets me nine dollars and ninety five cents so now that you've got those price break points in place it's very easy to put an estimate together like this where for every different item whatever the price break points are it will calculate everything for you and down here I've got California state sales tax but I've marked it in yellow letting you know that you can change that to whatever the appropriate appropriate applicable sales tax rate is in your area. So I've given you the formula so you could theoretically create something like this for yourself. But if you want to, as always, I've made the formula available for download in my knowledge center. We've got it in there. It's $10 right now. It may not always stay that price. So get it now while it's still $10 if you want it. And of course, that way you can have this to refer back to and look at the formula, study it. You come over here to the formula and, and hit the F2 key on your keyboard, which gets you into your edit mode so you can study the formula and trace it and figure out how it works. So that, my friends, is how you can set up a very simple template that will allow you to calculate price break points. And of course, this will save you hours of time instead of having to think it through every time. Once you know you've got your ranges in place, then all you have to do is enter the quantity and the work is done for you. And this sample estimate form might be very helpful to you in terms of using it in your actual business for your actual customers and prospective customers. As always, I look forward to seeing you on the web. My email is seth at nerdenterprises.com. My website is www.nerdenterprises.com. And once again, I look forward to seeing you on the web.